Hello everyone, my name is Samuel Whitmire. I am a senior mathematics major here at Arkansas State, and this presentation is over my honors thesis, Fractional Derivatives, Integrals, and the Generalized Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. My mentor, Dr. Miao, and I have been working on this since June 2019. So this thesis covers fractional calculus, which is a subfield of real and complex analysis involving what happens when we take non-integer order derivatives or integrals of functions. For example, uh, in Calculus 1, many students remember the first and second derivative tests, which involve finding the first and second derivatives of a function. Well, we ask what happens when we try to find the one-half derivative, or maybe the two-thirds, or even an irrational number like the square root of two derivative, or integral of a function. Uh, this, the primary goal of this thesis is to unify the proofs of two very popular theorems in standard calculus. The first being the fundamental theorem of calculus, which essentially states that uh, derivatives and integrals are inverse processes. And the second is Taylor's theorem, from which we can approximate a function as its Taylor series of a degree n plus the remainder term defined by or bounded by the n plus first derivative of the function on an interval. Section two involves Lebesgue measure and absolute continuity. Lebesgue measure is only used to extend our results to a wider scope of functions because some functions that are not Riemann integrable are Lebesgue integrable. And on the other hand, absolute continuity, which is a type of continuity that is stronger than both uniform and standard continuity, is used primarily in proofs. And we don't have proofs, the proofs in this presentation, so we probably will not be seeing absolute continuity much again after this. But it's there for the background information. The gamma and beta functions are also background information that we need. The gamma function is important because it allows us to turn the factorial operator into an operator that applies for any real number as defined by this integral here. This is important because this is how we define the fractional integral. Beta function, on the other hand, is again is another part that is mostly used in the proof, so we probably won't be seeing it again, but it is fundamental for the results that we have in our paper. So to, find, so to define the fractional integral, we have to start with Cauchy's formula for repeated integration. This is the keystone that the entire fractional calculus operator definition rests on. And, the, and this is a formula that allows us to integrate a function n times and see the corresponding output. And the fractional integral takes the factorial operator in the denominator of the Cauchy formula for repeated integration and replaces it with the gamma function so that we can have a definition or so that we can apply any real number to that formula. And the fractional derivative is similarly a the derivative of a fractional integral. That's how we define the fractional derivative in this paper. Here's some examples of functions for which we have fractional derivatives and integrals. The fractional derivative of a polynomial is not bad, but the fractional integral of a exponential is harrowing to look at, to say the least. Some properties that we like, the addition, or sorry, the integral operators are additive. The derivative of an integral is the original function. Converse is not true. And for the alpha if the derivative of f to be 0, f has to be this polynomial-like term. So section 5 deals with the generalized fundamental theorem of calculus, which this is the theorem itself, but we're mostly interested in the two results that follow. First, that the integral of a derivative for order 1 is equal to f of x minus f of a, similarly to fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. And second, that the uh, that a function can be represented as its Taylor series using this generalized fundamental theorem of calculus for a natural number n. The reason being is that if we move this term to the other side, we will see that f of x equals its Taylor series plus its remainder term. Section 6 deals with Abel's integral equation, a equation developed by Niels Henrik Abel to solve a physical problem in the 1800s. This is our definition of it. And the solution for 0 less than alpha less than 1 is given by the derivative of this statement. We use standard calculus to prove this. For the general term for any alpha in real numbers, we again have a solution that involves fractional calculus using the alpha derivative of f. So that is all that we did in this thesis. I hope that you enjoyed watching this. Please stay safe and have a good remainder of the day.